All right, folks, we are back again with a, another installment of some statistical analysis. Uh, in this segment, we're going to start focusing on uh, building regression models uh, using Microsoft Excel. And as you hopefully can see here, we have the uh, sales.csv uh, marketing data up. It is a uh, time series data set. Uh, and you can kind of see that in that each row uh, is actually a unique date and they're listed in chronological order, uh, starting with January 1st uh, and going day by day. So this is a uh, time series data set. We're going to really not do too much time series analysis per se uh, in this segment, but just something to be aware of. Even if you had time series data, you can still kind of invoke some of the cross-sectional analysis we are going to do here. Um, uh, by the way, uh, if you need to find this data source as well, you can also access it from my uh, GitHub repository um, if you go to the URL listed at the top of the screen, you should be able to access um, the data set there. Um, so. A few things here, we have uh, some numeric data and we have some categorical data, uh, volume of sales, price, ad spend and impressions. These are all numeric variables in the blue. And we have a few categorical variables uh, in the green here, the day of the week, the month of the year. And there is a binary variable uh, that is actually coded numerically. We're going to see that makes our life a little bit easier when we get to dummy variable regression in a moment. Uh, but it is a categorical variable. It's just coded in a way where it reads zero if there wasn't a promotion run on that day and a one if there was a promotion run on that day. Um, in a moment, uh, we're going to start thinking about choosing the variables that we want to use to build our statistical models. And we're going to take the perspective that we want to actually predict the sales variable. That is going to be our Y variable, uh, our predicted variable. And we want to think about using the other information we have to make some sort of forecast of our sales. Uh, in order to do that, we need to figure out in some regard which variables are really associated with sales, sort of the key drivers here uh, in terms of thinking about our uh, predictor variables, uh, the X variables that are going to go on the other side of that regression equation. Um, and to do that, let's go ahead and invoke the correlation matrix and in order to do this, I do need to have the statistical analysis tool pack loaded here. And it might be hard to see. I'm just going to shrink the screen down just a tiny bit. Um, uh, so that it might be easier to see this. Uh, but there is a data analysis tab in the top right corner of the screen here. And in order to make that visible, if you do not see that there when you are clicking on your data tab, uh, then what you will need to do is you will need to right click somewhere on that ribbon. And, and you're going to uh, say you want to customize the ribbon. And then uh, once this screen pops up, showing you your options here for customizing the ribbon. In fact, let me just back out of this uh, a little bit here to make sure that is fully viewable. Uh, then we're going to go ahead. We will click on the add-ins option. And I want to add the analysis tool pack, which is right there at the top of that list. That is what we're looking to add here. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I have that one selected and then I'm going to click on go down at the, uh, the bottom. Click on that option there and a, another screen pops up and we'll just make sure the one we want is checked. We will hit OK. And then when we go back and we click on that data tab uh, again, we should see that uh, data analysis button show up in the top right portion of the screen. Uh, so all I'm going to do here, let me blow the screen back up, uh, and we're going to click on that data analysis tab, and then you will see another sub screen will pop up. 
And what we want uh, is now we want to take a look at the correlation tool, uh, which is the third one down right there in the blue correlation. I'm going to hit OK. And then it's going to ask us, it's going to prompt us rather for which columns we want to build a correlation matrix for. And where it reads the field for input range, and we're going to want to go ahead. And if you put your cursor in there, we can actually just click and drag over the numeric input range. And I mentioned promo was a categorical variable, but since it's coded numerically, we're also going to go ahead and grab the promo variable here. So I'm just going to highlight making sure we've uh, told Excel that there are labels in the first row. So it's not expecting numeric data in that first row. We'll make sure our cursor is in the input range and I'm just gonna highlight all of the information uh, that we want here. So all 365 days worth of observations in that time series. And, and I'm gonna put it in a new worksheet. We'll call it correlation matrix. We'll hit okay. And here is our correlation matrix. Let me blow it up just a little bit here. And uh, right away, we can see that um, there are definitely some strong positive relationships. Uh, note between the sales variable and the ad spend variable, a correlation of 0.73-ish. And we have a couple other uh, positive relationships here. Impressions and promo looks pretty positively related. That might make sense. We ran a promotion and social media impressions tend to go up. Uh, also, uh, maybe a little bit weaker, but still positive relationship between ad spend and impressions. And otherwise, um, promo and ad spend are positively related here, but we want to remember our predicting variable, the Y variable that we're interested in predicting is sales. And looking down that sales column, I think it's, it's fairly obvious that there is a key driver of sales in terms of having the highest uh, positive, strong correlation there. And that is uh, the correlation with uh, ad spend in the green. So we're gonna kind of focus on first a bivariate relationship. What's the relationship between sales and ad spend? And then we'll also think about kind of incorporating some of the other features that we're noticing here in terms of maybe other variables that might be of secondary importance when thinking about trying uh, to predict sales. All right, so uh, first step in our analysis here in terms of variable selection, we need to figure out a Y variable. What do we want to predict? And then I'm going to use this correlation information to think about which other variables may be important predictors. And we're going to start by building a model where we try to predict sales from the amount of ad spend. We'll predict the sales variable from the ad spend variable. And just to kind of check uh, that our analysis is reasonable here, let's go back to the data. And I'm gonna keep the raw data on the left side of the screen. In fact, let me uh, scroll back up to the top here and let's make sure our column is auto fit just so everything is fitting nicely. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this highlighted data, the raw data, I'm not gonna to touch that. And the uh, any data I need to manipulate, I'm gonna just copy into a column on the right. And we were interested here in having our sales variable so I'll put sales in column P and I'm going to just relabel this for the moment. That was our Y variable that we wanted to predict. And we recognize that ad spend uh, could be a good predictor of sales in that it was highly correlated with the quantity of sales. And again, I can format those columns there just so everything fits nicely. Okay, um, so before we start building any regression models, we saw there was a correlation descriptively in terms of statistical measures. Let's go ahead and uh, just build a visualization of that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight uh, both of the columns of data that I wanna use to build a visualization. 
ad spend on the X, sales on the Y, and having the X variable on the left side of the Y variable will be helpful, it's not extra configuring you need to do here. And once I have that data selected, I'm just gonna go to the insert tab and uh, you'll notice there's an option to click on recommended charts, but what we really want is a scatter chart. So I'm gonna just click on this option that looks like a scatter. And you'll notice it gives us a nice preview here of a scatter chart. And um, we can reformat the title a little bit here if we would like. Let's say sales versus ad spend, which was our X variable. That is what we are looking at here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move this chart to a new worksheet. Uh, let's call it scatter plots. Complete might as well. And here is our scatter plot. Uh, recall before when we looked at the correlation matrix, we noted that there was indeed a strong positive correlation between sales and ad spending. Uh, and in fact, when we look at that correlation plot, or sorry, the scatter plot rather, uh, we do see that. Now, to make this even more apparent and to uh, really kind of get at the low hanging fruit here, if we were to go ahead and add a chart element, and you go down to the trend line option here, okay, if we add a linear trend line, this is really what we're doing when we estimate a bivariate linear regression. A bivariate regression is one where we just have two variables, one Y variable, one X variable. And I wanna fit a linear trend line through there. You might see on the screen already, there is a blue dotted line going through the data. That is the best fitting linear regression line. And we can go ahead, click on that line and we can format the trend line a little bit here. Uh, first, let's make it a little bit more obvious. Let's make it nice and red and I'll make it a little thicker, maybe five point thickness there. And uh, let's also go over to the chart options here. I'm gonna scroll down and tell it to display the equation as well as the R squared value on the chart. And this is important information for us. Uh, that is immediately giving us the regression diagnostic information in terms of the regression equation. I can make that a little bigger. Uh, so that is the equation of the red line. It is telling us the slope of the red line is 18.848. And the vertical intercept is 12,431. And the R squared for that trend line, for that regression model is around 54%, meaning uh, the variation in ad spend explains roughly 54% of the variation in sales day to day. Ad spending explains quite a bit more than half of the quote unquote reason why sales is varying day to day. Uh, now, we also don't want to just use the trend line analysis here, but we want to use the regression tool that is built into uh, Excel. Uh, so let's go ahead and build a bivariate regression model using the regression tool. And we'll keep this here as a reference point that our uh, regression equation was Y equals 18.848X uh, plus 12,431 and the R squared was 53.87%. We will keep that in mind as we go back to the sales data. <clears throat> and uh, now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna click on the data tab and I'm gonna click on that same data analysis button uh, that we saw earlier in the top right. Hopefully folks can still see that same place. There's that data analysis tab. Again, if you don't see that, right click the gray area on the ribbon and then you'll click customize the ribbon go down to add-ins make sure the data analysis tool pack is added in there you hit go and then select it to add it in um, so i'm going to click that again and, and this time rather than invoking the correlation tool i'm going to scroll down and we're going to invoke the regression tool right there and once again, I'm going to hit OK, and we'll be prompted for some information regarding the regression model that we want to build. Okay. 
Okay. And you'll notice now it's asking me for a Y input range and an X input range. Okay. Uh, so for the Y data, we want just the sales variable here. So for the Y data, I'm just gonna grab the sales variable, just column P. And then the X input range, we just want the ad spend variable. Okay, which will be column X. Uh, if we wanna output it to a new worksheet, let's call this model one. This will be our first regression model that we're gonna build. Um, and I'm not gonna check any of the other special options here for the moment. I think we have everything we need just to build a standard model for the moment. Let's go ahead and press okay. Actually, before we do that, uh, since we do have labels in the first row, let's make sure that labels tab is checked just like we did before. And then we can go ahead and hit okay to build that model. All right, and now we are looking at our regression output here. Let me just increase the view so it's a little bit more clear here. <clears throat> and let me format the columns so everything fits nicely. Okay, so we've built our first model. And this is again a bivariate model, one Y variable, one X variable. And we should be now familiar with some important diagnostic information here. Uh, the R squared is around 54%, 53.86, uh, which I believe is exactly the same value that we saw when we added the trend line to that scatter plot model. There it is, 53.87 rounded there, very similar. Hey, the other important values that we wanna be aware of here are the slope and the intercept terms, which are the coefficient estimates, right? The intercept is 12,431 roughly. The slope coefficient on the ad spend X variable is 18.84. That means if ad spend goes up by one unit, the sales variable goes up by around 19 units, 18.848. Okay, and we should be able to recognize right away uh, that both of these parameters are statistically significant. The p-values here, which are listed in scientific notation, are very, very close to zero. Okay? And we should recognize that is consistent with the t-statistic being relatively large and the quick and dirty threshold that we want to use. It should be larger than two in magnitude and absolute value, and those definitely are consistent with statistically significant results. Okay. Uh, another thing that might be important to interpret here is how far are we off on average? Well, the uh, standard error, the residual standard error here can be interpreted as us being off by around uh, 4,940 uh, units of the sales variable on any given forecast. And you might recall if you check the average variable of sales, it's around 50,000. So being off roughly 5,000 is around a 10% error relative to the mean value of that variable in the data set. Okay, uh, notice we're also given the upper and lower bounds on the confidence intervals for each of the effects we're measuring in the yellow. The intercept, for example, is 12,431, uh, but that could be <clears throat> uh, as low as uh, 8728 and as high as 16,133. Uh, and it looks like those columns got duplicated there, uh, but that's okay. And for the ad spend variable, uh, we see the average effect of a unit increase on ad spend on sales is roughly an 18.84 increase in sales from a one unit increase in ad spend. That effect could be as low as 17, could be as high as 20.64, 6, 4, 5-ish. Okay. Um, there's also our ANOVA table. We will uh, potentially not really need to use that too much here manually, uh, other than recognizing the result of the F tests P value here in orange. Uh, that is again, very close to zero, uh, indicative of us having a jointly significant model. Not only are the individual features, the intercept and the slope significant, 
but as a whole, the model is significant in predicting the Y variable, that being sales. Okay, so this is us uh, building here a bivariate regression model. Okay, we will pick up in the next segment, thinking about uh, adding more variables into uh, that analysis.